Hey everyone, Casey Scanlon here, bringing you another Lake of the Ozarks fishing report. Uh, we're in the middle of August now, and the fishing's been what I would consider slightly tough here the last uh, few weeks to a month. You know, some days are really good, and then a lot of days the fish are there, but they just don't want to bite. So uh, we're having to use finesse presentations to kind of get them to bite. But uh, overall, um, we've had some really hot weather, and now we're starting to feel like fall a little bit. So things are things are changing uh, here at the lake. We've had a lot of those 80 degree days and a little bit cooler nights. So that's moving some of the shad around, and the fish are are you know kind of in that that period where we're not having a lot of current through the lake, we're creeping up into fall, and we're, we got really, really hot water temps. So just in general, the fish are spread out and uh, been, been kind of tough to catch. You know, they've been getting a lot of fishing pressure all year. So uh, having the right baits on and getting your timing right has been really important in, in order to, to catch these fish uh, day to day. So um, the, the entire lake right now, um, you can go out and get bites on. Water quality looks pretty good uh, everywhere I've been. So uh, water level is uh, about 659. They've been drawing a little bit of current, you know, in the evenings and mornings uh, from what I've seen, uh, but, but not a lot of generation through the dam. Um, and, you know, the water level has been fluctuating just slightly. Um, so some days it's up a little bit higher and some days it's a, you know, a few inches lower just based on, on what they're generating. But it's uh, a lot of cover in the water. We're almost a full pool. So a lot of, a lot of targets up there shallow to fish, no matter what uh, area of the lake that you're in. So, um, you know, we're, uh, like I said, we're getting into fall. So one of my favorite times to fish Tons of different baits are working, and that's just going to continue uh, to develop as as we kind of progress into these shorter days and and cooler nights. So, um, you know, guide trips and um, you know just going out there trying to catch numbers of fish, finesse presentations have, have been the best. Whether it's like a Ned rig, um, a drop shot, shaky head worms. Uh, wacky rig has been good. Uh, the Nico rig, which is basically a wacky rig with um, a nail weight or some kind of weight in it to get it down there has been good too. So uh, throw a lot of, lot of uh, spinning rods, 10 pound Bass Pro Shops, fluorocarbon line for the leader attached to, um, you know, 15 pound to 20 pound uh, Bass Pro Shops uh, braid for the main line. So that that braid to fluorocarbon combination, um, if you're not using it, you should really give it a try. It's a lot less hassle as far as maintaining your line, um, you know, having um, your, your, your line mess up like line twists and, and things like that that are commonly associated with with spinning rods, I can use the same line on there for you know two or three years sometimes uh, as far as the main line on the braid and then just replace the leaders daily. You get a lot more casting distance and you're gonna catch a lot more fish. You got a lot, lot more um, uh, better hook sets with that with that less stretch involved. So, uh, but a lot, main bait for a lot of these trips and just going out and catching fish is a Bass Pro Shop Sticko. You can fish this. Um, this is our go-to bait for me on this lake or any lake I go to. Uh, you can Texas rig this. Uh, we throw it a lot on a wacky rig. I'll cut it in half and use it on a Ned rig. I wish I had one next to me here to show you, but uh, you can throw it on a drop shot. You can throw it on a shaky head. Uh, it just gets bit and green pumpkin is my go-to day to day. You can switch that up, um, you know, depending on water clarity, but you know, watermelon, green pumpkin, black and blue, you can't go wrong. So uh, try that with a wacky rig, try it with the nail weight in it and fish that around uh, uh, brush piles, boat docks, uh, fish that you see on live scope. A lot of these fish that we're targeting right now are swimming around chasing shad. So. Um, we're looking for the shad, we're looking for boat docks, brush piles, cables, things that are close to where those fish and those shad are setting up. And um, you know, that's the main target. So a lot of these fish are cruising around high in the water column. Uh, they're suspended right now without, with the lack of current. So, you know, swim baits, um, 
you know, all, all these baits that are slow, slow to fall to the bottom, like a wacky rig, a drop shot, you know, something that you can keep in front or Ned rig, something you keep in front of their face and target these fish that are suspended uh, around boat docks, brush piles, bridge columns, and just bait fish, you know, locating the bait fish and then finding the fish. I've got the Garmin live scope on the front of the boat. So, um, you know, throwing at a lot of individual fish or groups of fish swimming around, you'll see four, five, six, up to 20 fish at a time sometimes, just swimming through the water column, looking for bait. And if you're ready and can get a bait in front of those fish, uh, you kind of got to judge which direction they're swimming, throw a bait out there, let it sink to them and get it in their face. A lot of times you can get them to bite. But um, so depending on uh, what area of the lake are you in, um, it kind of dictates the bite. So lower end of the lake, a lot of finesse presentations, uh, top water bites starting to kick off a little bit, but the fish are generally deeper. Um, like I said, a lot of things going on. So suspended fish around boat docks, you can run uh, up and down the entire lake. Um, look for docks with crossbars on them, some kind of structure around them that's gonna hold those fish. And uh, a lot of times they'll suspend right underneath the foam of the dock or around the cover associated with it, cables, uh, just the corners of the docks, um, the crossbars. Uh, so look for those fish on your live scope. Look for shad. That's what the fish are eating. So find the shad and then fish the boat docks close to them. Brush piles are working pretty good. Um, that's always a player when they kind of shut off the current or just in Lake of the Ozarks in general. We have a ton of brush piles here. Uh, they're around the boat docks, they're in open water, they're everywhere. So I'm using my electronics, whether it's the side view or down view on my Garmin, you know, when I'm idling around or going into a cove, I'm always keeping an eye out for what's below me and to the side. And I'll mark these brush piles. I've got tons of them marked and the ones that are around the shad are typically better. Um, but those brush piles can be anywhere from five to 25 feet deep. So in this time of year, unfortunately you can't just say they're gonna be in 10 foot brush piles. That might be the pattern of the day or you know, brush piles towards the back of the creek or brush piles on the main lake. You know, you kinda gotta figure out which ones they're using. That can change day to day, but you know, they, you want them to be around bait fish. And um, you know, this time of year, it's hard to say which ones are gonna be best. They, you could catch a fish out of a two foot brush pile that's almost touching the surface and you can catch them 25, 30 feet deep, deep um, on the bottom around brush. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. They're utilizing a lot of the water column right now. So you can catch fish literally anywhere. So uh, patterning those fish day to day is really important. So they, they move around a lot. They swim around with the bait fish. So uh, you just got to kind of stay on your toes and, and day to day judge what they're going to do. So brush pile baits, um, a jig is my go-to trophy bass company pro jig you can see this one i've had tied on several days now the skirt's kind of melted and uh yeah head paint is worn off but it's been a good one this is a great jig around boat docks brush piles it just doesn't get snagged much and it catches really big fish um, i've got the craw diggity i believe it is from bass pro shops on the back great little trailer and 20 pound line around the brush piles and boat docks. I want, uh, I want to keep those fish on and, and keep from breaking off around uh, that heavy cover. So I'm using 20 pound Bass Pro Shops fluorocarbon, uh, seven foot four carbon light rod and uh, eight three to one gear ratio carbon light reel. So you want to bring those fish away from that cover as fast as possible. So that high, gear, high speed gear ratio reel really makes a difference when you're fishing a bottom bait. Uh, other baits that are working well, uh, creature baits, like your Zoom brush hog are always a staple on the lake. Um, green, again, green pumpkins, black and blue, I don't get too complicated on that. Um, you know, your big worms, 10, 11, 12 inch power worms uh, have been really good. Um, this is like a seven or eight inch max scent worm. Uh, Really, any kind of you know uh, ribbon tail worm is going to work good. So uh, again, black and blue, uh, plum, green pumpkin, something like that, uh, June bug, all of those colors will work. I like that on a Texas rig. Uh, 
That and the brush hog, like I'm on a Texas rig with, um, again, 20 pound line and anywhere from like a 5 16 ounce to a half ounce weight, depending on how deep the brush piles are that I'm fishing. Um, you can still catch them deep out on points. Uh, again, live scope's gonna be real crucial for some of those fish that are suspended. Um, jigs, always a good bet out there. Deep crankbaits, swim baits, uh, anything to kind of draw that reaction bite and something that's gonna get to the bottom fast because these fish will still use the structure out there 20, 25, 30 feet deep. Uh, all the way through the fall. So got to keep checking that as well. Uh, some shallow fishing starting to develop, whether you're way up the river or uh, which is typically always shallow fishing. Uh, when you get up above like the 50 mile marker here, uh, the fish just live shallow. So if you're fishing up that away, water clarity looks good and a lot of shallow cover in the water. So Stay shallow, fish the targets that look good in front of you and keep it simple. Um, you know, Texas rigs, jigs, top waters, um, you know, uh, square bills, shallow running baits like a spinner bait are always going to be a good bet. Uh, but your shallow bite is starting to work. Um, again, jigs, Texas rigs, your shaky heads, all that stuff's going to be uh, really productive. Uh, and then you got, you know, a little top water bite kicking off, whether it's a buzz bait. Uh, this is a new Chaos Shad from Bass Pro Shops. It's a, you know, like a plopper style bait. Uh, creates a big disturbance, has a great sound. Uh, you know, wake baits, big swim baits. This is a swim bait, uh, wake bait from Bass Pro Shops. It's the Swerve Wake. And then here's a big glide bait. These bigger baits this time of year. You got big gizzard shad up shallow. We've got a lot of bluegill that are up on these full moons running around shallow, even some bluegill that are still gonna spawn throughout the summer. Uh, so those bigger baits like that, um, you can cover some water and get some big bites and they're always really fun to, to fish, but they're starting to work a little bit. Caught a few on the glide, uh, caught a few on the top water lately and um, that bite's starting to kick off. Here's another one, Smooth Walker XPS Bass Pro Shops bait. Really good sounded bait. Um, that one's great in open water. I like the buzz bait and I like the plopper style baits like the Chaos Shad, more around like bank oriented type stuff. And then, you know, for open water, corners of boat docks, things like that, schooling fish, um, you wanna use that, that top water bait. Uh, speaking of schooling fish, still seeing some schooling activity. That's been happening all summer. You just gotta keep your eyes open. They don't come up to the surface for very long, but if you're around the shad, you'll see fish pushing the shad and occasionally they'll come up. And a lot of times there's big numbers uh, of, of bass chasing those shad. There might be 20, 30 of them come up at a time, but they won't stay up to the surface very long. So have some braided line on, have something like the smooth walker uh, walking bait that you can throw a long ways and get to those fish um, when they're up on the surface feeding. Because if you can get a bait in there, regardless of what it is, Typically, you'll get a bite uh, if you can get it on them uh, relatively fast. So if you see those fish come up to the surface, no matter what you're doing, reel that bait in, throw it over to them, and try to get it as close to as you can to where they're surfacing, and, and you're gonna catch some fish doing that. Um, it's really important to get your bait to them quickly because like I said, they're not gonna stay up very long. So uh, we've got structure fishing. We've got brush piles, suspended fish around boat docks, and, and we've got a shallow bite going on. Shallow fishing uh, is about covering water. We've got, depending on the area of the lake you're in, there's lots of laydowns available, lots of rocky shorelines. The shade lines can, themselves can be a, a really good target. So this time of year, you'll get a lot of shade lines like on a bluff or something in the afternoon. It's always a good, good uh, idea to go check that. These sunny days, this really warm water, they'll seek out some of those uh, shady protected areas and, and cast them to top water or jig or something around there uh, can, be, can be really productive. So uh, target the shade, target lay downs, visible cover, uh, some of these rocky banks and flats that just have shad on them. Uh, look for the shad presence. That's all, no matter what time of year, uh, no matter what lake you're on, being around the forage is, is important. So uh, look for the shad on some of those banks and uh, just cover some water with square bills, top waters, um, you know, Texas rigs, uh, 
you know, anything that uh, kind of resembles a shad, moves really fast, will get a reaction bite. And then, you know, of course, those slower moving baits are always gonna succeed. Uh, shallow brush piles, there's even some grass in the water. We've got a lot of water willow in certain areas of the lake. There's Water's not really high enough to get a bunch of fish up in it, but there's a few hanging around it in the mornings and things like that. So um, keep an eye out for activity up shallow and just keep your bait wet, keep your trolling motor moving and uh, look for shad and good looking visible cover. I mean, a lot of those fish are just gonna be on the best looking cover available. Shallow boat docks are always a good target. Um, look for the places with shad again, uh, boat docks with brush piles and a lot of shade underneath them are usually are usually really good targets. So there's a lot going on at the lake right now. Um, I've got a lot of guide trips available uh, this fall and, and uh, later this, uh, uh, later in August, I'm about to leave here for our last Bassmaster Open uh, at the end of the week here and go to, uh, I don't even know where we're going, Minnesota, Leech Lake, never been there, should be an exciting tournament, uh, but a lot of guide trips available. We've got a lot of uh, tournaments that are gonna start kicking off here now that the summer's winding down and some of the big boat traffic's gonna be uh, wearing down off the lake. So um, it's gonna be a good time to get out on the water and catch some fish. Crappie are biting a little bit. Um, you gotta kind of fish for them deep and, and uh, kind of trick them into biting a little bit, but we're catching a lot of crappie as well. So great time to book a trip. Um, here in the next few weeks, the weather's gonna be really good and the fishing should be just getting better and better. Uh, fall time's gonna be a great time to run a pattern and you can learn a lot of different techniques. So if you're wanting to get out there and learn some techniques or learning how to run a pattern or just get to uh, learn the lake a little bit more, give me a call, we'll go fishing. But uh, until next time, good luck out there. Hope you guys catch some bass. They are biting and uh, weather's looking good for the next week. So good luck to you.